Hi, I'm Dr. González Colá, and in this mini lecture, we'll be talking about the synthesis of the thyroid hormones. I will be using surgery basics in 4D for this lecture. The thyroid is located in the anterior neck, just inferior to the thyroid hormones, and it is divided into the right left lobe as well as the pyramidal lobe. If we make an incision here and look at it in a microscope, we will be seeing something like this, where we have the parathyroid gland and multiple thyroid follicles. The thyroid follicle is basically this arrangement of cells. There are follicular cells that are surrounding a central colloid or lumen, as we can see in this image. So this entire complex is called the thyroid follicle, but this is composed of multiple follicular cells which surrounds the colloid or lumen, which is a um, proteinaceous uh, fluid. On the outside, you can find parafollicular or C cells, which are outside of the thyroid follicle. If we zoom in into this area, we are going to be able to see the colloid or lumen on top and the follicular cells with their apical membrane, basolateral membrane, and uh, sodium and iodide. It's important. In the follicular cells, the thyroglobulin molecule is synthesized. This is a large peptide chain that is secreted into the colloid. This large chain contains several tyrosine residues. On the basolateral side, iodide ion and you can remember that uh, the iodide is obtained in the diet because of the D. So iodide comes in the diet and uh, gets into the follicular cell and then it gets secreted through a um, co-transporter named pendrin. Once in the colloid, two of these ions are join together to form one iodine molecule. And as you can see, the iodine with an N is the molecule that we're gonna be talking about from now on. Iodide with a D is what you obtain from the diet. This reaction is um, enhanced by thyroperoxidase. These iodine molecules then attach to the tyrosine residues within the thyroglobulin molecule. The tyrosine residues can accept either two or one of these iodine molecules and these are called T1 or MIT or T2 or DIT. These T1s and T2s fuse with each other, and if two T2s are joined, then the molecule is called T4. If one T1 and a T2 join, then it becomes a T3 molecule. But it is still attached to the thyroglobulin molecule within the colloid or lumen. When needed, the thyroglobulin backbone is introduced into the follicular cell and lysosomes, which become endolysosomes, break down this molecule and basically free up the T3s and T4s. Now, there are other T1s and T2s that are formed up and also 
become freed from this molecule, but because they are not physiologically active, they go back to the colloid or lumen to join other ferroglobulin molecules and continue the synthesis process. T3 and T4 are lipophilic and therefore cannot travel well in blood and they need a thyroid binding globulin to travel within the circulatory system. There are many more T4s created than T3s and T3s are about 10 times more potent or active than T4s. And this is the end of this mini tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.